takes you through the steps. Now, yes, you will have to have your my.unl credentials, and sometimes you may have to have what's, what most people know as a MAC address. Now, some people know what that is, some people don't, um, and that is a common problem. So on this next slide, I have included common problems and solutions. So first let me mention that thankfully we are not dumping all of the uh, MAC registrations this year. So all returning faculty and staff, all returning uh, students, their registrations will be intact so you don't have to worry about those. Okay, so the first problem that we get all the time is I'm registered correctly but I still have no access. And the reason that is, is, once you connect to the wireless registration network, it automatically pulls that network over any other one. Therefore, once your device remembers to connect to that one first, you will not be able to connect to UNL Air, which the mass majority of people use. So the solution, go into your network settings and say, forget wireless registration. So that's on uh, iPhones, iPads, PCs, whatever you're trying to connect, do that. Try to connect again, and 95% of the time that fixes that issue. Anything else, just direct them to us. The next problem it says, it's asking for a MAC address. Um, what's that? That's actually how most people worry that. Um, what's that? So I've included this link right here. It's actually directs you to the ResNet webpage where it says finding your MAC address. Now obviously there are several different types of peripherals that are going to try to connect to the network. So this actually includes, um, these are kind of old screenshots, but they're like the same, <laughs> the same general instructions uh, for iPhone, iPod Touch, iPad. You can scroll down. Then you have Windows 10, gives you the command prompt where you can find it, and so forth and so forth. So that's a good, a good um, tool that we can direct you to. The last one uh, that we have mentioned is, I can connect anywhere but my residence hall. Well, that's because the residence hall used uh, what's called Safe Connect, and it allows the users in the residence halls to have that feeling of, um, my neighbor's not hacking into my stuff, pretty much. So there's another tool that we direct people to, um, and it is on that ResNet website, again. Um, the first step is, the, um, the general just connecting to the UNL air. But the second step goes into um, registering your device on Safe Connect. And so this literally goes step by step um, for the uh, qualifications, the, the different things that they require for each uh, computer to be eligible to connect in a residence hall. For anything else, you can always just um, tell them to come and speak with us. Um, this is our official link um, to the Help Center. We have a few different locations where we are, the 501 building, uh, room 105 from 7.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Gives our phone and our email. Um, we do uh, have a presence in the Commons, as mentioned earlier, from uh, eight to five. That's us full-time. Um, staff are there 8 to 5 and then there are students there until 8 p.m. And then we are also in the East Campus basement, um, <laughs> this Philly Hall, um, and we're also there from 8 to 5. So those pretty much are the basics concerning wireless registration, um, the problems that we see the most often. And if for some reason you don't know the course of action, how to get in touch with us. So I went through that pretty quick. Was there any, any questions regarding wireless registration, Wi-Fi, common issues? Yes? There is also the guest registration option. Yes, there is. Um, there are actually there are several different Wi-Fi um, networks that we have, guest being one of them. Um, you'll probably have a lot of parents wanting to connect to that one um, this, this next week or so. And um, it's very self-explanatory. You just connect to it. Um, it'll tell you, hey, this is unsecure. Are you sure you want to do it? And then click yes, and then that's it. And then look, there's also a conference one, which you probably won't have any questions about. There's an education Roman one that you won't have any questions about. So, so yeah, that's good. 
Any other questions regarding wireless? Will there be more staff up this weekend with all the students coming? Will there be <coughs> more sorry. staff out for the weekend? Out as, as in? Available? Um, no well, comments or anything? Well, um, we will have more. Uh, oh. <laughs> yes, there will be additional Husker Tech staff in the Learning Commons this Friday from 11 to 4 and then next Monday and Tuesday from 9 to 2. So there will be up to four of you guys in there. Sorry. <laughs> Did I see one more? Yeah, when, uh, back to uh, connecting to Wi-Fi when you uh, say one of the solutions is to uh, um, forget wireless. Could you go over that again, what that means? Sure. Um, for that particular one, um, the way that is set up is the wireless registration network. Once you connect to that and you've gone through the registration process with your MyDotUNL credentials and, and so forth and so forth, once you finish the registration and you try to connect to the UNL Air network, it will not allow you to connect to the UNL Air network if your preferences in your peripheral are still set to connect to the wireless registration network automatically. So you have to tell your whatever you're trying to connect, hey, do not connect to wireless registration first. Don't do that. So uncheck connect automatically. Once you do that, then go to UNL Air, and you should be able to connect to that successfully. Any more questions regarding uh, wireless? OK. Is there still? Uh UNL Air and UNL Air um, Secure or whatever that is. E. E. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Which one are they supposed to connect to? We generally want everyone to connect to UNL Air. Um, that is the one that we have the most bandwidth for. That's the one we're most prepared for. Students, faculty, staff, and guests. Well, not really guests, but uh, the first three to connect to. Now, yes, UNL Air E or encrypted is available. Uh, some staff use it. Um, there's a link uh, inside that first uh, the first web page we went to uh, that gives the instructions on how to do that, and that just provides a more I would say peace of mind to whoever's doing that. We know that uh, uh, like our uh, law department people that have different um, confidential um, things that they do they like to connect to that. So, but for the students, we want to just direct them to UNL Air. That's what we want to direct them to. Any more questions regarding wireless? Okay, awesome. So we're going to move on now to print it. Okay, so we all know that technology has taken over the world, but there still is a need for printed page. So there are now kiosks all over campus. There were just four additional ones added. Uh, so this website right here um, is an excellent resource with anything regarding questions on how to print, how much is it to print, where can I go to print, those sort of things. So pretty much the basics um, when it comes to this um, are as follows. The easiest way to log into a kiosk is sliding your in card. Um, it allows you to access your account, anything that you put in your drive, anything you put in the print queue, boom, it's right there once you slide your card. Okay, let's say you don't have your card for one reason or another. If you tap the kiosk, you, it actually allows you to use your MyDotUNL credentials. You can just type it in right there, same accessibility. Okay, okay. Now let's say you're not affiliated with the school at all. All right, there's actually a guest feature on there. So that means that people from the public, or let's say parents, or people coming in for uh, conferences, they are still able to print. Uh, they can set up a guest account using their existing email. Um, and this is just as simple as the previous two. Now this particular website allows you to uh, log in. I'm sure everybody's seen it, right? Raise your hand if you've seen the login once you've... Okay, that's, that's a lot. So we're going to go back to this. So that's awesome. So that means you can connect your Google Drive. If you don't have Google for some reason, some people don't. There's actually a drive that is provided through the Inc. Uh, company. You can use that. Um, 
And then that website again gives you prices and so forth and so forth. Um, so those are the basics, the basics. Any questions regarding ink or printing or how that works? Okay. What if my format isn't coming out correctly? What do you recommend using? Sometimes that happens. Um, if your format doesn't work correctly, we always recommend changing the method of printing. So let's say that if you're trying to print a Word document and you throw it in your print queue, and now when you get it, there's G's and L's and E's missing, and then there's three lines coming out in the middle, and you're like, what is this? So one way to combat that is to, to convert that document into a PDF. Generally, PDFs print out correctly most of the time, but sometimes they don't. So in that instance, again, change the method of your printing. So instead of putting it in a print queue, why don't you put it in your drive this time and print from the drive? Whenever, for some reason, is there's never one solid way. So if it's printing correctly from the queue or incorrectly from the queue, sometimes if you throw it in drive, it's fine. But then sometimes if it's printing incorrectly from the drive, then sometimes when you throw it in the queue, it works correctly. So you gotta kind of kind of work with it. You know, be flexible. You know.